if you're joining us today on our radio broadcast, you are if you're hearing this. So let's if you not are, you're, play coy, everybody. You're listening to us on your radio. Just kidding. Uh, thank you for <laughs> joining the hashtag I'm Mom So Hard podcast today. Uh, Where we talk it, about. All of your problems. All of your problems and your woes. And we fix nothing and we are qualified to give zero advice. Yeah. Uh, but if you'd like to pour yourself a glass of wine and hang out with us, that would be nice. But, uh, you know, from the comfort of your own home, hopefully. Cheers to you. Cheers, cheers to you, lady. To you. My, I guess my, we got to tell everybody where they can find us and all that. Well, wherever podcasts are listened to, it's not like you ended up listening to us because you were on like Pinterest. That's well, not where we are. What if a guy was like, I want to see a couple of hot ladies that are in the mom space and I'm hoping that they French kiss each other. And so they put in, I mom so hard. And then they found us. I would say, don't go away. Just rate, review and subscribe. <laughs> I would say we'll send you a free t-shirt is what I will say to that, sir. The only action you're going to get is say t-shirt to pull on yeah. over your head. Anything Listen to us, subscribe to us, rate us, and as long as it's good. Otherwise, go to Yelp and bash your local baker. Uh, <laughs> you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, or watch the podcast on the YouTube. The YouTube, which is I Mom So Hard, the, podca the podcast. My, my podcasting equipment is getting in the way of my happy drinking. hour cocktail. Same. These things get in the way of drinking. We are... <laughs> We are. It is officially happy hour. It is five. I don't know what time it is, actually. It's five o'clock somewhere. It's time literally five o'clock for us, which is glorious because we've made it through another, means, another day. That's exactly, exactly right. And today was a little bit of a pisser because my son, anytime your kid says this to you and you know this isn't true, but anytime they say this to you, it's still like, stabs you in the heart and then twists a little bit he goes i just feel like you just want me to be perfect oh my gosh do Which they is, know you that's the most uh, ridiculous thing i've ever heard it's literally the child equivalent of saying i'm sorry you feel that way because it's like i'm gonna leave you dangling with these emotions it's like a drive-by for a mom to say that because it's like literally we start unpacking it and we're like oh my god am i my mother did i turn into my mom otherson i Wait, know am I, have, am I putting too many expectations on him just because i want him to clean up his grubby underpants from the bathroom floor it really it hurt for a second and i took a beat and i said now why is it that you think that it is because i got mad at him Time three, time three in yeah. one day when he was reading comic books and not following a lot <laughs> to the English thing. Oh. And I said to him, I go, let's be totally honest here. Do you know everything she's saying? Like, do you already know all that information? And so it's boring for you. He goes, no, I don't know it. Then I go, then all I'm asking you to do is the bare minimum, which is keep your eyes focused. Yeah. You're doing way better than me. I just yell at him all the time. It's just like, oh, there's some of that. Go, go back in. What are you doing? Knock it off. Eleanor says to me, this is her new thing. And she says it with such delivery that I'm like, what? Wait. And it stops me in my tracks. She'll go, I just want you to know, sometimes the things you say are hurtful. <gasps> and then there's a pause. And if she wants, she can bring a tear, a perfectly Demi Moore ghost tear that just trickles Holy. down when she. And I, I said to her. I just told you that your room is a pit after I just cleaned it two hours ago. What part of that is hurtful? I'm asking for you to clean I up your toy. You're and a pit. She, yeah, I said, your room's a mess. This makes it really hard for us. We can't do remote learning if your room is messed. The words you say are hurtful. I'm like, you need to grow up in the 80s, man. Then that those are big swings back then. Now we're so careful with their feelings. Yeah. My son's having a hard time though because he's in love. Like he's oh. he is in love and he is in love with a girl who right now cuz they're they've been remote learning since the beginning of the year. She's been in Iran for oh, a wow. month or so. Yeah. Uh staying with her grandparents and it's an 11 hour time zone so difference. So it's exact opposite. So there's never a time wow. where they can talk. Yeah. And um, she's his best friend. And in this 
absence, he has decided that he loves her. And I think we all know that a king feeling, that like desperation. Oh. And I I knew he missed her, but I didn't know how bad it was until my husband was like, you got to help me. He <laughs> wants to call her. And I was like, yeah, he always wants to call her. He goes, uh, he wants to call her and tell her that he loves her. And I was like, Will you sit down? Because that took you like a year and a half. So yeah. just because your seven not, year old's a bigger man, don't you're, be. You're not going to make anything better. He's going to. Dashiell's like high on Kool Aid and he's like, Mom, I just need to, make, I need to call her. I need to call her and tell her my feelings. Yeah. I, I'm I like, sit down. You've, you've had a lot of nuggets. Let's it, cool <laughs> it down. Cool yeah, it down. Don't, a notch. don't yeah. overdo it. Don't overdo it. Think it through. But my husband wasn't sure what to do, which is weird because not that he's like a know-it-all, but usually like he'll make a decision regarding the kids. I'll make a decision. And then we're like, yep, sounds good. We'll go with that. Like there's not a lot of, but he wasn't sure what to do about it. So I didn't know if my son would feel comfortable enough to tell me that he wants to call her and profess his undying love. But he did. He did? Uh, did he call her? No, he told me about it. And this is what I said. And then he journaled. He was like, I got to write the, my feelings yeah. down. And he like, and I mean, my son my is so John on. Mayer, but not dirty. He's very <laughs> like folk singery, heartthrob. Yeah. But so my husband was like, he can't do that. Like, what if she laughs at it? What if, what if, what if, what if? And I'm like, well, there's a window what? into your brain, sir. <laughs> Let me close that window. Like, I, huh. I didn't laugh at you. I was mad that it took you so long. I we was living mad. Together. I was like, finally. And I know yes. it. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> he. OK, so I said to him, though, and I don't know if this is right or wrong. I don't care about anybody out there's opinion because this is what I said. And it was right for us and our family. I said, what does loving S Dorna look like? That's her name. And he goes, it's we get married someday. And we have kids together. And I'm like, well, how many kids do you have? He goes, however many she wants. And I was like, right answer. Oh, he's such a good man. And he's only seven. And I said, y you can love her. You can love her. But in our family, there's nothing you can really do about that other than just enjoy your friendship with her until you're much older. And then and you have you an could, advanced degree yeah. and a car then, and perhaps your someday, first down payment on a condo. One thousand percent. One th Aunt, Aunt Kristen's going to go through your finances and oh, do the final so sign much. off on when you can so do it. Much. And, I and then I said, y you can't date until you're you're much older. That will be a family rule. And your father and I will discuss what age that will be. But it's not acceptable is to Dashiell, have a romantic is Dashiell at any point going like I just wanted to get on a zoom and tell her I loved her and now we're no. unpacking my entire future mom no. can you he was, he was asking, no he started bargaining about what age it would be he's like after I get a cell phone before I get a cell phone because it's all like oh that's the bigger like, want but he's a very like I won't have this conversation with Delilah because she is she's very like uh Janice Joplin that girl. she's like a feral artist and he's different he's like very logical about everything so I knew this approach would work I said uh you you can't date her until you're a certain age and he was very upset I go well, what's dating look like to you he goes that we have that we like go to Chili's and have dinner together and I go <laughs> I hear you yeah, tell Jim's your father like, I wouldn't okay. date that either I'll go but up I'm to the like, bar have a margarita I can drive spy on you guys you guys can sit at your own table and daddy and I will sit at another table and you can have time together. But there's no there's nothing else Ign that's going to ignore happen. your parents as they cry and take pictures on their cell phone just to mark the occasion. We just want. To yes. <laughs> so then in. he goes, he thought about it. He goes, well, can I tell her that I love her in the fourth grade? And I was like, yes. Because you know, there'll be somebody else. There'll be 10,000 others and we won't have to have this conversation anyways. You'll get it by then. So yes, you'll be too scared to say it. Yes, you could tell her in the fourth grade. It really does kind of turn around third and fourth grade. At least it has for us because Finn was like, when I tell you that Finn he like would scrunch his nose if like a girl came into the conversation as though she was like, 
the thing that was going to make a party suck. Like she's yeah. he's like, ugh, no, nah, oh God. And I'm like, like she smelled on. like garlic. Yeah. I'm like, hold on, buddy. And he's like, well, I don't want to do it if a girl, there's a lot, I don't want to do it if a girl's there. Like, cause we had him in hip hop dance class, which I found like the best hip hop, by the way, we're in LA. This is not like, you know, a, a, a weird dance class. This is all boys and girls. And they're, these girls are like, totally good at yeah, this class dancing. was taught by like jc chasses totally. or somebody <laughs> it's like <laughs> this like really cool dude was teaching the class and finn i think it's because i started to feel feelings like got in there and he was like i don't want to be in with all these girls and i was like in literally 13 months this will change you are going to stay the course and so now but now now he's getting crushes on girls but he's remote learning mm. so they're not on his class they're on all the game show network hosts that we're watching. So, oh, same, same, Sophia same, Vergara, same. Uh, oh, Heidi Klum, the woman on the human. mask, Jenny McCarthy, Jenny McCarthy or? and the other one, Nicole, forget, oh, forget her last name, shirt singer, uh, yeah. Jenna Dewan Tatum, not Tatum, Jenna Dewan. Same. Like, it's, I mean, honestly, we, you know, I, I get it, the, but he's like, he doesn't know how to, he literally. If this doesn't tell you where he's at mentally, he doesn't know how to whistle. He cannot make his mouth whistle, right? He can't whistle. So he tries yes. to he tries to cat call from it. Not that's a terrible word. He tries to shout him out with his like he goes, woo, 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 and he sounds like an old timey cartoon, like the wee woo, the like eyes are coming out of the head. And he's like, Oh, hey mom, do you think I can date Heidi Klum? And I go, um, you have to be out of high school and ha you go. You have to be in college. He's like, yes. how old will she be? I go, I don't know, like sixty five. And then he's older he's than like, me. Yeah. And then he goes, well, grandma's still good looking, so that works, right? And I'm like, oh god, I I'm either doing it all right or I'm doing it all wrong. Like he's either crushing on. I don't know. He's got a he's got a strong affinity for a, a generationally up the church well, crew. It's so. It's so very interesting of young boys because Finn's, he's almost 10, though. He's almost 10. Like and he's next really, month, right? Yeah. And I think okay. if we were at school, he would be having major crushes right now. But because right. he doesn't get to see people in person, I think he is directing it towards uh, game show hosts. Well, God love uh, whoever <laughs> created all, all these human beings that we all are. But, I mean, he, he cannot whistle. He cannot. He can't whistle, but very effectively do long division. Not yet, but he's in love. He's in like, love. It's it's for five the, minutes. It's the propagation of the species. We have to continue. So these little boys follow it. It's not love. We all know it's not it's love. Not it's not love, but it is impactful. And I do think yeah. you're doing the right thing by acknowledging it because I think these like. I mean, there's nothing more precious or sweet than a romantic gesture. And I don't care if they're in kindergarten all the way into like, you know, whatever. A romantic gesture is beautiful no matter what. I mean, we all live for romantic comedies and the big, you know, say anything, hold the boom back box moment. Like, so yeah. I think it, I think it's really nice. I think you guys steered him in the right direction to not like overwhelm her because she's going to be like, Hold on, dude. We That's aren't even lot. like fully, That's aren't even fully exclusive yet. I'm still yeah. like, it's complicated. <laughs> Jen, I'm sure that you have a lot to say about apostrophe. I do. And going to the doctor right now is so hard, but uh, prescription acne treatment, it really works. It works better than anything else. And it's hard to get unless you go to the doctor. You have to take time off work and all that stuff and wait at the yeah, pharmacy sit in line at the yeah. pharmacy so now there's yeah. apostrophe and they make it easy to see a board certified dermatologist online so you get treated like immediately and your medications get sent to you you just fill out their online questionnaire about what your skin concerns are mine were all of them but specifically acne and then uh, you give them a medical <laughs> history take a couple selfies which i thought was really cool and then you upload and then a dermatologist gets back to you with a customized treatment plan. Oh, that's fantastic. They gave me a topical and an oral is totally working. 
So well done, apostrophe. And right now, get $15 off your first visit with a board-certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash imomsohard. Use our code, imomsohard. This code is only available to our listeners. So to get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash imomsohard and click begin visit. Then use the code imomsohard at sign up and you'll get $15 off your dermatology visit. That's A P O S T R O P H E dot com slash I mom so hard. And use that code I mom so hard to get your dermatology visit for $15 off. And a big thank you to Apostrophe for sponsoring our podcast. Let's talk about one of your favorite things clothes. another version of shopping and <laughs> clothes. Well, look, it's the winter, the days are long, and the nights are cold. It's a great time to do That's some right. uh, looking at your winter wardrobe and which is my realize, favorite winter wardrobe. Realizing that you need to make some changes. So Stitch Fix can help you pick some, ch- some choice pieces that you're going to love. And Stitch Fix offers clothing that's hand-selected by an expert stylist for your unique size, your style, your budget. It's a completely different way, and it's a really fun way to find clothes that you'll love to wear. Every piece is chosen for your fit and your lifestyle. It's a very different way of shopping for clothes because I generally hate shopping, and this is a fix yeah, for so me. Yeah, so Stitch Fix is like your me. Your, that does all yeah. your shopping it's for you. It's literally... Yeah. But here's the thing. You're still shopping for me. So I'm just getting all sorts of cool clothes. (laughs) So you can try on pieces at home before you have to buy them. You keep what you love and return what you don't. And Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns, and they send you a prepaid return envelope. So it's really easy to return what you don't want. That's right. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash imomsohard, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash imomsohard for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash imomsohard. My husband is just, he's a little bit shy. I'm a shy person. He's way worse than me. It's like he's got this very New Englandy waspy, like, uh, don't talk about it, and it's not occurring. Yeah kind of thing. And um, I wish when I was younger that I would have had very concrete boundaries because, uh, hey, let me do a film for uh, <laughs> TCU. <the> Abstinence <laughs> only. <laughs> don't work. It don't work. It don't work. You got to You got to like, you no, gotta, like, no, because it. And if you tell girls they can't have sex, the bee holes are fine, right? <laughs> like, we all know that, it's girl. Very, yeah, it's very confusing. And it's a double standard. And I do, I've thought a lot about this because I feel like I, I, as a mother, I want to say, especially to Eleanor, like, have a full, ha, you know, as a cool girl, I want to say, like, have a full life, have experiences, you know, fall in love with a lot of times and have a lover in Europe. And as a mother, I'm like, go to the nunnery. And then when you're 30 and you've found a nice business owner who makes a logical, makes logical sense, only have sex with him and then have eight children. That's what I want. That's what I, the, my, I think what you want to do is protect them that's from anything. That's not even what you want. That's, no, yeah, it's not. That's the it's safest. The, it's when we tell our kids, like, be a pediatric dentist. It's because. Oh, yeah, I want that. I want that. Well, you're just I like. I want that. I'd rather you not take major risks because I don't want you to hurt at all. I want you to like, basically you're saying like, please win the lottery. Here's my expectation for you. Win the lottery relationship wise. Right. So I, because life is, you know, love has pain and you want to protect your kids from pain, but romantic gestures are a part of it right like did you ever give a did you ever do a big romantic gesture knowing like not knowing I the outcome you just said did you ever give a book and I was like mind your own business Kristen I told you abstinence only doesn't work who are you my mom get back off back it off back off <laughs> well I don't need to remind you of my high school experience but a lot of it was me hoping to have experiences and just living vicariously through my very big boobed friends and just Uh, like pain and oh my god like so many like so many gestures that were in my head and my heart and you're right it does feel like love when it's because it's your first time of like like I recognize a connection with this human that doesn't feel like anything I've ever doesn't feel like how I feel about my mom or dad 
This feels different. Like, what do you mean? Like, what kind of gesture? Like, did I, like... Well, uh, yeah. Did you ever, like, write a love note or a poem? Or did you ever tell somebody you love them when you didn't know if, like, not when you're 20s, like, when you were young? Like, either dash old age or, like, yeah. It's really... I used to just try to tell people they were dating me, but that didn't work. That's what I was going to say. I want to tread lightly into this conversation because I... (laughs) I... Had boyfriends in. <laughs> I know. I, Are you bragging? Great. Here we go. No one. Here we go. No, no, no. Here we Vince, go. I don't want it to sound that way. I don't want it nope. to sound that way. Jen's going to talk about how she had a fully active, totally normal social life and dating experience in high school, and I'm going to have to listen to it nope. all over again. I, I, I. Part of it was normal, and then part of it was like. I wish my parents would have been way more like had rules and stuff like that and like expectations. It all started with your party line. The fact you my had a party line. Three way calling leads to three way. <laughs> three way. That's literally, three-way literally calling. nothing else. No, yeah. it leads to the triple triple combo at Chili's. No, it doesn't actually. Like, but I I wish that I would have had like that's sweet. What you you're like crushes and stuff are sweet and no, i they feel aren't. like they were totally tortured they weren't sweet they were awful and i also was like not even like i i was a disaster of a human i think my parents didn't give me boundaries because they were like well we don't know if she's gonna hit any of those in any expected time so we're just what gonna love her mean? the way she like what? like i was so i was so awkward and weird and like <laughs> biz- like everybody was like just kind of going a- along a normal path they were getting boyfriends like seventh and eighth grade they were trying it out colin my husband the same like sixth seventh eighth grade you're like oh this boyfriend this girlfriend thing is, is a part of your develop or it's part of your thing and i was like oh i feel weird around uh, a boy i'm just gonna have these terrible debilitating crushes that make no sense and i'm gonna i'm gonna create this world that we live in that is not real and i would like have I I told you I got caught French kissing my clarinet during band. I was practicing. What? But what would have happened if you would have ran the other way? Ran, scared, shitless. No, if you so you would never have like slid somebody a note that said, "Do you like me?" Check yes or no. <laughs> like like me like me. I think I would have slid a note that said, "We are very happy together." <laughs> I've been envisioning this for months, and right now you're building me a log cabin on the Colorado <laughs> plane. We've we've been dating for two years, and you just don't know it. No, I think I was just very. And then by high school, I just had a lot of friends. In college, it all changed. I start. I dated a you know a few, and then. Uh, but I wasn't very. I, I just didn't have the ability to have. A relationship in high school because it freaked me out and scared me. But it wasn't because my parents were setting up boundaries. My parents were the opposite. They're horny toads with each other, first of all. Like, I, <laughs> uh, you know, they're young parents. I don't think they knew that you're supposed to have those conversations. They were just kind of like, everything happens, you know, like, yeah, you know, it'll be fine. It's, and my, I, I remember one time I was really going on about, I was a virgin, of course, is the the big word in, in high school. I was a virgin. And I was talking to my mom about it because that's what virgins do. We have a lot of ho- long conversations with our moms. And I was like, I really want it to be with someone special. Gross. Why am I having this conversation with my mom? It's so inappropriate. Did you really have that conversation? I, I was talking. Yeah. I, I was talking to her, but I think I was talking like, like about someone else, but it was clearly about myself. Like, mom, I have this asking for a friend. Name um, Briston. Name Briston Schmensley. And she, <laughs> she, she's a schmurgeon. And I'm just wondering, like, is it, it's like the right thing to do is like to wait for the one you love and make it su- super special. And then she's like, or you can just do it because it feels good. And I was like, that's a terrible, that's terrible advice. But I think my mom was like seeing me like, go down this weird world where I was like making my like my I was making myself feel weird for just going at my own pace she was like Kristen it's it's like you're like freaking yourself out my mother said this to me girl here's why I'm strange and weird no I this is so interesting about her. I didn't know this. It's so very different. It's such a different dynamic because she so she was like 
maybe you it, like you don't necessarily have to be like mayor like you could no she she's was super catholic you guys my mom's very catholic but at the time what she was trying to say is that when you were with somebody you love and you get to have sex and you get to make love it's really special and it gets to be something that you get to know each other with it doesn't have to be the person you're married to and it doesn't have to be like i think i was being strange about it and she was like trying to just put me on planet earth meanwhile i think she like went and chugged like 14 beers after that because she was like why is this why this conversation why am i not having the conversation of like don't do it i'm telling my kids my daughter like, hey, it, you know, it's a natural thing. It's OK. You don't have to wait till you're 40. Like, it's all right. And then I was like, <laughs> it's February, which means that if you're coupled up, you're probably wondering how to make Valentine's Day special. Oh, I probably this should year. be, right? Whether, <laughs> <laughs> I know this is the first reminder I've had. Whether you're spending every moment with your partner or you're taking this quarantine time to work on yourself before jumping into a relationship, it's really important to seek out a therapist to help you set and accomplish your goals so you can emerge from quarantine stronger than ever. That's right. That's I'm you know I'm such a believer in self-help and I know water seeks its level. So get good, get right, so you meet somebody who's getting right, right? Yeah, I kind of look at it as like a personal trainer, like instead of working your muscles, you're working your emotions. And I think there's a lot to it that I didn't realize was so beneficial, just talking yeah. stuff out. And Talkspace makes it great because it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg and it makes it feel very, very yeah, reachable. And plus, everybody's kind of having a hard time right now, which there's no shame in. Totally. So they can get None. you in touch with uh, somebody who can help you out like right away, any time of day. Talkspace lets you send and receive unlimited messages with your dedicated therapist in the Talkspace platform 24-7. That's what I mean. With Talkspace, you set your goals with your therapist and they hold you accountable and make sure you're really progressing. Therapy can really help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in a difficult time and really be a guiding light. We can honestly say our therapist gave us practical guidance that really changed our lives for the better. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com or download the app. Make sure you use the code MOM to get $100 off your first month and show your support for our show. That's MOM and Talkspace.com. You know when you have content to push out and a story Always. to share? We can remove the complexity with issue. They make content look amazing whenever you post exactly how you envisioned yes, it. Yes, because Issue is the all-in-one platform to create and distribute your digital publications, including social media like Instagram and Facebook. They can even help you make animated Instagram stories, which is rad. Yeah, super rad and exactly what we need because we are often frustrated. <laughs> so you can start you can start using Issue for free, but they also offer premium features that give you a more customized experience. Get started with Issue today for free, or if you sign up for a premium account, you'll get 50% off when you go to issue.com slash podcast and use promo code MOM. That's I-S-S-U-U dot com slash podcast and use promo code MOM at checkout for your free account or 50% off your premium account. That's I-S-S-U-U dot com slash podcast with promo code MOM. That's I-S-S-U-U dot com slash podcast with promo code mom. I don't know why I'm saying it. it's such a bizarre thing. I but I do remember having this very impactful conversation with her where she was like, just like, oh my God, you're 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 spinning out of control. It's just sex. And then I was like, window into you, Terry, what's up? <laughs> Look, I've had sex literally millions of times. Yeah. And then my dad's so, in the background like so many millions and I'm like, gross. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Ew. No, they so love to talk about that crap with each other. They, they always talk my, about it. Ugh, oh, it's gross. God, not mine. And I wish that they I wish that they would have. Boy, this has really spiraled in the weird direction. Yeah, but it I, sure has. So here's my worry, though, is like, are we bringing like what's in our head, like any negativity yes. to sex? Are we bringing that to our kids? Because I don't yes. want to. Yes, it's called motherhood. We bring... <laughs> Yes. We pay shit forward, Jen. That's what we do. Like you said that with such little shame. You were like, yes. Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying to make them do everything differently than us. I, yeah. yeah. 
We're putting expectations on them so that they make us proud so we can have bragging rights. That's what we do. Mine are smarter than me at the ages they are like now. So, but I, I do, I don't want to like put on them some like just totally disjointed, not relevant narrative about what they need to be doing in their relationships. Because- Impossible. If it's not your narrative, it's going to be somebody else's. Even if you're making up your narrative as you go, it's your well, narrative. But what if it's what if it's theirs? What if it's That's their not narrative? How it works. It's supposed We're, to. No, it's not. We tell them. We tell no. them what to do. Yes. Oh, God we tell loves- them what to do. And then they resist and then they figure it out. This is what we do. We tell them what to do. And then they say, fuck you. I'm going to do it my way. Then they do it their way and their way is wrong and their way is bad. And then they come full circle and then they apologize and they meet someone and then they have kids and then they get it for the first time fucking ever. And we roll back in our seats and drink a martini. Mm. That's what motherhood is. Well, it's us like trying to like guide them. All right, let me break it down. Like if my mom, my mom, (laughs) if my mom, my mom would have had her way. She would have been like, you're going to graduate from high school and then take a job at the base exchange as a checkout girl. And then you're going to meet a a young officer candidate who might be a dentist someday. And you're going (laughs) to marry him. You're going to have 11 children. You're going to start having them at 20. And then, it, like, l- your life fulfilled. Okay, fine. But the plan she played out isn't the worst thing you've ever heard. It's just not the best idea for you. And then you resisted. I mean, there could have been a worse thing. She could have been like, you know, you're going to live in my basement and uh, you're never going to leave the house again. Like, it's not the best. That's what I want for my kids because I love them so <laughs> We all want, that's our maternal pull is like, we want them to do the safest and best thing. And sometimes those two things do not line up. Like we want to tell them and then they're going to resist. And that's what it is. They're going to resist us. And I'm, I will come undone just so everybody's fully aware. I will come undone, but I will read the books and I will search the info to come undone in the best possible, most informed way I can. Yeah. Yeah, but that's I'm all we gonna, can hope for. I'm going to I'm gonna watch on Ring apps. I'm going to look at their GPS on their phone. I'm going to search their histories. Yeah. I'm going to, like, do background checks on anybody that they're possibly dating. I'm going to decoy their Instagram shit. I'm going to I'm going to straight up stalk my children and yours and anybody else that needs me to. <laughs> I'm saying like, I literally don't know. I don't know what best outcomes are in turn like I I can't my gut will steer me wrong and my gut as a mother undoubtedly will steal steal and also it'll steer me wrong but I also want to say that like if my kids brought home somebody that they love there's no way I wouldn't love them because I just oh there is if I I, me nope if you're there I might need you to be the voice of reason but that's why with my kids like when they're seven years old and they want to call somebody and say, I love you. I feel like I need to have these very logical rules that are maybe they're not like the most like lovey dovey, but it's like, I'm just going to lay out a roadmap for you that that will like predict the best possible outcome for your life. And that, you know what you could have said that was really wrong that you didn't say. That's great that you didn't say that because you're worried about saying the the wrong thing, but you said so many of the right things because they work for you and you're reading your kid and you know your kid best is you didn't say you're too young for that. You're too young to love because I disagree with that because he's experiencing those feelings and those feelings might feel like love. But what you did was you reined it in and you were like, all right, man, this could be like this could be literal like tsunami and we just got to like oh, yeah. play inside the rules or the the boundaries a little bit to keep it safe for you. But I think that that's exactly the thing we should do all the way until, you know, they've got their master's degrees. I'm telling you right now, the last thing I'm going to do to any male on the planet, if he is my child or not, is say, admit to love less because I think it's such a men see it as like such a sign of weakness or something. And it's like, obviously it's like such a strength, you know, like I 
I, yeah, I think it's just how they internalize it. I think that um, we're, you know, we're working with Finn right now to just talk more openly about his feelings in general. And just like in a minute, just be able to, you know, not because he looks sad or because he's any one way. I'll just say like, hey, man, how, how are you feeling right now? And he'll be like, I feel pretty good. And then he'll talk about like a dude perfect video he saw and he'll tell me how funny those guys are. And then I end up feeling bad and that's fine. Oh, sorry. My husband's <laughs> literally, my husband's literally calling me right now. Should I put on speaker? You know why? Yeah. Cause I was going to ask you about him. Hi, hi babe. Uh, you're on the podcast. Oh, we are driving home from the golf course okay. and I was calling to see what you wanted for dinner. Well, isn't Aww. that nice of you? You can order me whatever. Uh, I probably can't eat it because, uh, but anything is fine. Whatever the kids want, I'm good with. The truth is, we don't know what to have. The I truth like is, Seven Eleven pizza. pizza. Not Seven Eleven pizza. I'm drawing the line at that. You got to have better taste, buddy. I'm not doing that. I'm not eating that pizza. Hot dogs? Not Seven Eleven hot dogs. We're better. What we golf can... course did they go to? The Encino Golf Course. Guys, why don't oh. you why don't you guys pick something that isn't at a 7-Eleven and then we'll eat that? Okay, well that's a cheating. Okay, sounds good. Love you. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> guys, do you see I can't even I can't even go with you know what I mean? Metaphorically, he wants to do 7-Eleven pizza. Are so nice, Kristen. My husband would not suggest 7-Eleven pizza to me or I would divorce him. There's no way on the planet I would eat 7-Eleven pizza. And he, there's, who's doing it's that? My son's favorite pizza. No, it's no, his, I don't care. We buy the bougiest pizza mm. and he wants 7-Eleven pizza. Nope. That's why I'm afraid of like, who's he going to date? Because I cannot have a metaphorical piece of 7-Eleven. Yeah, You know, I can't, not. I can't do it. And you know what the problem is? If, God forbid, he brings... I'm not a hard person to, to please. I will have certain character yeah. points that I need in a person, and she that she's going to need to be dazzled by me because that's going to be the main thing. And if I don't like her, the problem is going to be me trying not to show that I don't like her because I know when you don't like them, when you're, as parents, if you don't like them and, and you say it, it makes the kids want to date them more. So is I'm going to have to do that weird frozen smile when they come in like... And then beg for a breakup or make one happen on my own. You guys, everything's fine. I'm a very grounded parent. 7-Eleven pizza. That's what I'm starting with. Ground level. 7-Eleven pizza. pizza. It's so disgusting. He loves yeah. it. It's so, he's going to take, you know what? I don't have to worry about dating. He's going to take his first date to a 7-Eleven. It's over with. It's done. It's, it, it, it's over. He'll pay for it because he knows that, but he's going to take her to a 7-Eleven. He's going to be like, you don't, you don't get any water. It's too expensive. I didn't know 7-Eleven was a thing. Like It's a thing, man. It's a thing I in this house. If I had been lost like in uh, <laughs> like a Ugandan jungle for about three weeks and uh, hadn't eaten and there was a 7-Eleven and they were like, do you want pizza? I'd be like, absolutely fucking not. I no. need it so fast. I need it so fast. <laughs> because, like I said, I would say I'll eat this snack pack of bugles first. I'm not <laughs> eating that. <laughs> because internally, I'm trying to make decisions that are not the ones I really want to make. That's what mothering is. I would eat that pizza, but I want my son to do better. <laughs> I can that's uh, the, this is how easy uh, to please Kristen is. She would eat that pizza I no would matter eat that what. Pizza. She would. I would totally. eat that pizza. I would eat that pizza and I'd be mortified and I and I but I would enjoy it and I want my son to be better than me. So that's what mothering is, is get them out of the 7-Eleven. You guys, I think we got to go to a hot flash. Oh, yes, we do. Hot flash, hot flash. I got to go to a hot flash. I'm not going to make it too long because I'm going to talk about this over and over and over and over. So really? Jen, okay. okay. It's not off topic of what we're talking about today. It's love. It's love and romance. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to beef this up a little bit because I want to experience this before my children ruin this experience. Okay. <laughs> 
before they come in with that 7-Eleven pizza and ruin your boner. That's right. I'm going to, I'm going to, I can feel like I'm a woman right now. Uh, I'm going to talk about the show Bridgerton. Oh, no. God. I know you haven't seen it. I haven't, and I'm going to see it. I'm going to watch it. You say it, that I keep... about everything. You've said no, that about I don't. Titanic. You've said that about, uh, you've, you've said it about I'm everything. I'm not going to watch Titanic because everybody dies. I don't, not, I can't, I can't. It's I the cry Titanic. Too How the is this, uh, literally, but anyway, moving they on. They should call it the Hindenburg. I know what happens. Okay. So honestly though, Kristen, I'm going to watch it, but. You're going to want to watch it for the co- costumes. Yes. For the characters. Okay. Quick All snap. Of it, but I'm falling. Like my husband and I have I to stay awake. I know. I know. So here's what I'm going to tell you why I am having a minute with Bridgerton. And there's so many minutes I could have right now. Um, first of all, if you don't know how this show is set up, it's like, you know, the uh, I'm probably going to say it wrong. The Victorian era, era where everything's like a empire waist, which is all boobs, you know, like like an empire oh, the waist corsets dress and stuff. The corsets and the boobs are like That's... look like butts on the chest. And then everything it's is so here, but it's not fine. It's a, and it's I would I call it empire. I'm here. A... Fine. Fuck it. Whatever. I wore corseted. theater once. And <laughs> you Everybody's beautiful. And let me tell you about the leads. First of all, big win on growing out their hair. All of them have very long hair. Like the men have like this long wavy hair that's like. Which you know I love. Okay. So I'm going to tell you. (laughs) The main actor is, he is Zimbabwean and English. So he, I cannot tell you how attractive this man is. He doesn't feel like it should be even legal. His name is Reggae Jean Page. Have you ever heard of such a name? And he it, is so dynamic on camera that when I saw him, I that's literally the actor sat name up. or the it's character the, name? It's the actor name. His character mm-hmm. name is the Duke of Hastings. And he's betrothed. Well, there there's a main actress and she is a part of the aristocracy and she's betrothed to him it's a whole thing i'm only on c episode three because i am i'm dating bridgerton i am loving every character i watched episode three twice because i want to make sure i'm paying attention to everybody i am making sweet love to myself almost every time I watch it. I literally I, can't feel my teeth right now. I'm so excited to watch the show. I have like such a so weird. so good and so fun. And it's exactly what I need right now. It's, mm-hmm. and by the way, I don't know, but I think it's, it's pretty sexual because I've done a lot of like searching on the webs and there's a lot of like talk about sex scenes. So I know there's something big coming up and I can only hope it's a lot with the main couple, which it sounds makes me sound so skeezy but right now i just want to like lean into romance and like i'm wearing my bridgerton top which is just a puff sleeve but i want it makes me feel like feminine and weird and girly and i let's one. visit the mom box you i'm let's making you do all box. the heavy no, lifting no because i've got a i've got a good one that i cried and it's so i have a really good one and i cried when i saw it because it's so um, cried happy or cried no beautiful? laughing my okay butt off. okay so this is from stacy fritas and i think it's from instagram if i can tell okay she goes you got this this story made uh this story may make you chuckle so my nine-year-old was up way earlier than normal this morning and I was walking around the house feeding the cats in a tank top and joggers and no bra because I'd just gotten out of the shower. My son stops me in the middle of the hallway after using the restroom and tells me, hey mom, I can tell you're not wearing a bra because your boobs are hanging low. My response, thanks for pointing that out. These low hanging boobs fed you and you just wait until you are my age and your balls will be hanging low too. (laughs) How dare you, son? <laughs> A2 Brute. Like, A2 have you know? A2 Brute. I mean, listen, I got to tell her she is so confident for walking around the house in that outfit. Like, I'm scared that they're like, I'd, 
have a spontaneous heart attack and die that way because I'm like, <laughs> these boobs are going all different directions. They're like, <laughs> they're not even great. And and one of them's like your going chalk this out, way. Your chalk outline would have like two random different direction bumps on the My outline. My chalk outline looks like a starfish that <laughs> like had something wrong with it. Like there's no... No, I'm not, but <laughs> we all are there because you sleep in something comfy and then you get up. And if there is a house fire, my neighbors are going to be like, Jesus, my son, when they come this, out to greet us and be my like, my son Holy says man. the same thing to me. He goes, but he'll say it. He's like, whoa, whoa, look at all that chunk in the junk in the trunk. This is like a chew toy. And he'll come up and give me a hug and squeeze my butt. Now. I say to him, it's your therapy, man. Like, I, you, I, this is not, I'm not. I'm saving saying, for college. I'm not saving for your uh, you, therapy. I have done my part. I have put down boundaries. I'm doing my damnedest. I'm, you know, if I'm in the bathroom, here's the thing. If I'm in the bathroom, we have two very small bathrooms. If I dare go in the bathroom and do what you do in a bathroom, it's like I've sent a beacon that literally I want everyone in the bathroom with me. I want both my kids. I want my husband. I want yes. both dogs to come sit down next to me while I'm on going to the bathroom or while I'm in the shower or God forbid I'm in the tub. It's just a big crowd in there and everybody's commenting on what mom looks like naked. I, I don't get it. It's like I didn't even know we had a light bright, but you bring it in here and yeah, you're playing I'm with it. I'm having a minute. Like, how uh, now is the time that you want to sit quietly and do something that involves me? I try me. to sound like I'm on Bridgerton when that happens, but they haven't really covered the bases on that. I'm like, make haste, young ones, get the fuck out of my bathroom. I don't know how they say that it's in Bridgerton speak. Scram, young turdlings, get out of the bathroom, <laughs> lest your mother uh, overstank you. That's a good note to end on, Jen. I, I feel like so. we've we've served up a lot of information. Oh no. Yeah. Oh boy. I think we're done. <laughs> I think we're done. You guys, we're done. Let's uh let's do it again real soon. All right. See you later. Listen Bye. to our podcast. Bye. Bye. Bye.